Hey everyone, I'm Natasha and thanks so much for watching. I'm really excited about today's yoga practice because um, I don't know about you, but when I wake up in the morning, I'm usually feeling really stiff and tight. And it is fairly early in the morning for me now when I'm filming. So I'm looking forward to this class that really targets the hips, hamstrings, core, wakes you up, gets you ready for the day, invigorates and loosens up your body. So to get started, we're just going to come to a comfortable seated position, um, actually up on your knees uh, like this and you may want to be this direction here in thunderbolt pose also called seiza in many martial arts but i'll face you for the time being and we're just going to start to warm up the neck and come into connection with the breath by closing the eyes and inhaling the head over to the right exhaling to the left. Inhaling right. Exhaling left. And we're only going from about over the shoulder to over the shoulder, not around behind. Over to the right. And over to the left. back to center. If you're not already facing this direction on your mat, go ahead and sit this way. I guess from here we're going to adjust the knees so they're a little bit wider about hip width apart and then inhale lifting up, inhaling the arms overhead while keeping the shoulder blades drawing down. Don't stick out like that. Keep your ribs tucked under, core engaged as you inhale up. Palms to touch or not, either way is fine. Gazing at the palms. As you exhale, send the hips down. Arms come forward, coming into child's pose. Let's do that again. Inhale, hips rise, arms up. Exhale, hands forward, hips down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, down into child's pose. One more. Inhale, up. Exhale, down into child's pose. And if you're feeling warmed up, you can bring the knees slightly wider apart to sink even deeper. Place your knees wherever you need to. We're just gonna hold for a couple of breaths. From here, shift your knees slightly under, bringing your wrists and shoulders and elbows all in alignment. Knees under hips, coming into tabletop. Now here, don't let your chest sink down. Activate, push up as you broaden across the back and engage the core, waking your body up for the day. Then from here, tuck your toes, inhale, pressing up to a full plank. Making sure once again to broaden across the back, pushing up. And then exhale, shifting back to downward facing dog. We're gonna take a moment here as you press through the hands to pedal the feet and knees. Walking the dog, waking up the body. Then when you're ready, finding stillness, pressing heels towards the floor. Do not stress if they don't touch, especially here at the beginning of practice. Think about lifting your tailbones, pointing them to the sky. Bring your gaze forward, inhale, stepping your feet in between your hands and rising to halfway lift. Exhale, folding forward. 
You can always bend in the knees if you need to in order to relieve tension in the back. Here you may also want to grab opposite elbows, sway side to side, letting your head hang. Still warming up the hamstrings. And then inhale all the way up like a reverse swan dive. Hands together, then exhale them to heart center. Let's take a moment here to set an intention for your practice. I'm setting the intention to try to be present, to not worry about what I was doing before or what I need to do later, to focus on the practice. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, diving forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, stepping it back to downward facing dog. Let's inhale, stepping the right foot in between the hands, rotating the left foot to about a 45 degree angle as we inhale it up to warrior one. Exhale, hands by the foot, pressing back to downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right foot spins up into warrior one. Exhale, hands to the mat, downward facing dog. Inhale, bringing the gaze forward, stepping the hands in between the feet, halfway lift. Exhale, releasing all the way down. Inhale up, exhale, hands to heart center. Let's do that one again. So inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, up into warrior one. Really feeling the hips opening. Warrior one is actually great for the psoas. Exhale, hands to the mat, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, rising up to warrior one. Trying to bring the hips so they're facing the front of the mat, not opening out like in warrior two. Exhale, hands to the mat, downward facing dog. Pausing here. Bringing the gaze forward, stepping hands between the feet. Halfway lift, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale, hands to heart center. Let's move through that sequence one more time, uh, even faster, trying to flow with your breath, taking one long breath for each movement. So inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward. Warrior one. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward. Warrior one. Exhale, hands to mat, coming back to downward facing dog. Bringing the gaze forward, stepping the hands, stepping the feet in between the hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, folding down. Take a moment here to see if your hamstrings are maybe already feeling a bit different from the way they were the first time we did a forward fold.
Inhale up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Now here, bring your big toes together and turn your heels slightly out. So you're trying to form a rectangle, a box, with the outside of your feet. So the outside edges are one straight line parallel to the long edge of your mat. Keeping hands at heart center, sending hips back, keeping chest up as we come into chair pose. Try to really ground through your feet and stay pressing into both feet. So check to make sure your knees or your hips aren't going funky and that your chest is arching up. If you begin to curve forward, go ahead and lift up until you find a place where you can keep your chest up as well. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hips high, folding forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, back down. Inhale, stepping back to plank. Once again, making sure to keep activated through the back. Then exhale, we're gonna try to run and come all the way down to the floor. So elbows hugging in tight all the way to the floor. Now I like to warm up my spine slowly. So I'm just gonna inhale into Sphinx here with elbows underneath shoulders. You can go into Cobra or Upward Facing Dog, whatever you like. Hands underneath shoulders, pressing back into Downward Facing Dog. From here, inhale, right leg up, trying to keep the right hip down, not opening up, but facing down, toes down as well. Holding for a moment here, and then stepping forward into a low lunge. Inhaling, hands to heart center. You can keep the toes tucked if you need to for balance, or let the foot be flat across the mat there. Making sure that you keep knee over ankle or even slightly behind, but not coming too far forward or there over onto the toe area. Inhale, lifting the hands up, keeping shoulder blades down. Exhale, hands to the mat, stepping back to downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up, keeping hips and toes pointed down. and stepping through to a low lunge, left foot forward, inhaling, hands to heart center. Now, even though you are dropping into the hips, try to think about increasing the distance between your hips and your rib cage. Instead of collapsing down, lift up. Inhale, hands overhead. Exhale, tucking the toes, hands to the mat, Coming back to downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg up. And then here, let's go ahead and turn out this time, opening up, opening the hips. But trying to keep the shoulders square. Don't let yourself fall over backwards. Keep weight pressing into both hands. Stepping the right foot forward, coming into a runner's lunge. So knee stays off the ground. If you need to, you can always drop it down. Inhaling up. You can stay here, or you can inhale hands up again. I love these poses that are a little bit more challenging to the balance first thing in the morning without being too challenging, just enough to wake up your mind and body. Exhale, bringing hands to the mat. Now, we're gonna do something a little bit tricky. Bring your foot back, move into plank, keeping your right foot up, and see if you can chaturanga down, keeping that right foot up until you come to the ground. And then here, moving into Sphinx, Cobra, or Upward Facing Dog, whatever you feel ready for. Tucking the toes, 
moving into downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up, hips and toes down for the moment. Then opening up, bending the knee, opening the hips, but keeping weight pressing into both hands. Gracefully stepping the left foot forward with control, coming into your runner's lunge, and then inhaling hands to heart center. Think about shining the hip bones forward and increasing the distance between hips and ribs. And staying here or inhaling up for a little added balance challenge. Exhale, hands to the mat, bringing the left foot back here as you come into plank, keeping left foot up as you chaturanga down. Moving into cobra, upward facing dog, or whatever your spine feels ready for. Exhale, pressing back into downward facing dog. From here in downward facing dog, once again, lift your gaze, stepping your feet forward between your hands, bending the knees if necessary, but taking another moment here to feel again if your legs and body feel any different from the beginning of practice. Inhale up, exhale, hands to heart center. And here again, taking a moment to return to that intention you set at the beginning of class. From here, let's just go ahead and sit down. Your legs should be uh, pretty nice and warmed up now. Uh, so we are going to move in to a forward fold. So legs extend out in front of you and then fold forward. Now, here, think about lifting your chest forward rather than trying to get it down. So if here is where you are, that's fine. Yoga is about accepting where you are on your personal journey. So it's better to stay here and have your chest lifted than to be here and hunched over. So reaching forward, grabbing onto your feet if you can. If not, no stress. Keeping your spine long and chest reaching forward. Allowing your upper body to surrender into the pose. If you'd like, you can even grab a pillow or a block so that you can rest your head on it easily. Inhale, lifting your chest, drawing your right knee in, keeping your foot close to your leg. Inhale, tall, and as you exhale, twist, coming around to hook the left arm onto the right knee, or rather just below the right knee, really. Reaching the right hand back and looking over the back shoulder. As you inhale, think about getting nice and long. And as you exhale, about twisting even deeper. You can stay here, or if it's feeling accessible to you today, you can reach around for the bind. Exhale. Gently release, sending the right leg back out, and bringing the left leg in. Inhale to get tall, and as you exhale, twist, hooking the right arm by the left leg. Hand is up, left hand behind you, gazing over the left shoulder, 
keeping tall and long. And again, you can stay here or you can reach around for that bind. Carefully releasing, sitting that foot back out in front, and then scooting down to come onto your back with your knees bent at about 90 degrees. I'm going to do a reclined variation of the pigeon pose. So bringing your right leg up, hooking your right ankle over your left thigh, keeping this foot nice and 90 degrees and mentally pressing out that right knee. Now we're going to inhale the left leg up, trying to get the left shin parallel to the mat. Don't grab onto your legs yet. Just use the power of your legs to stretch themselves. Keep the core engaged, trying to keep your lower back glued to the mat instead of arching up. And then if you would like, reaching through to grab your hands and getting a little bit of a deeper stretch. I really prefer these variations of pigeon pose uh, because pigeon pose can put a lot of stress on your knees if you're not already very flexible in the hips. So particularly first thing in the morning, I prefer things like this to help warm my body up. Exhale, dropping left foot, right foot, and then inhaling left ankle to right thigh, foot flexed. Inhale, right foot up. Once again, core engaged, back glued to the mat. And you can reach through and thread the needle if you'd like, adding that little extra stretch. Exhale, dropping the feet to the mat. Let's do one more uh, simple hip opener uh, to help start out your day the right way. So coming into happy baby, drawing the knees towards the chest, extending the feet to the air. You can either grab onto the big toe or onto the outside of the foot, whatever's working for you today. And here in happy baby, try to get your shins fairly perpendicular to the mat and work towards getting your tailbone towards the mat. So instead of being up here, a goal is to work towards bringing your tailbone towards the mat while your soles of your feet are pointed towards the ceiling. Another really great hip opener that doesn't put the knees at risk. Here you can rock back and forth a little if you like. From here, I'm going to bring my feet back where they were before beginning that reclined pigeon variation. So knees at about 90 degrees. I'm going to come into constructive rest position because I am beginning my day, waking up, uh, getting ready to face the day. Now, if you would like something more restful, you can always extend into Shavasana or you can stay with me here in constructive rest.
whenever you're ready, and it is absolutely okay if you're not ready yet. Slowly roll over to one side. Pausing a moment here. And then press yourself up to seated, taking it slowly, mindfully. We're gradually opening your eyes. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I really hope that you enjoyed this, a class to really wake up your body, get it involved, get it engaged and ready for the day. If you do like this video, it would mean so much to me if you could take a moment to leave a thumbs up, to like, to comment, and even to subscribe so that you make sure to get my free yoga videos. So thanks again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the class and I look forward to seeing you again next time.